So now that we've taken a look at the Umbrella roaming client, now let's take a look at using the Cisco Secure Client, formerly Cisco AnyConnect, to achieve the same thing. And the reason we may want to do that is because you may recall, recall that the Umbrella roaming client is a standalone application running on the machine. Now, in many organizations, they're already running Cisco AnyConnect or the Cisco Secure Client. I'm going to refer to AnyConnect as Secure Client moving forward. So with the Secure Client already running and modules configured for, let's say, the VPN, it makes sense to just add another module to the Secure Client. And we can actually do this by adding a Umbrella module to the Secure Client to achieve the same thing that we saw with the Umbrella Roaming Client. And this is gonna allow us to protect those remote users while they're not on our internal network. And if they are on our internal network, then we can also uh, automatically disable that uh, module so that it's not in use until that user's off the network. So in this lab walkthrough, we're actually gonna take a look at how we can actually install the Umbrella module on the Cisco Secure Client. Now, recall from the last lab walkthrough, we installed the roaming module onto the remote device and we verified that and tested that and we created a DNS policy around that. And this is a machine here. We can see that we have the client running, which is the umbrella remote client, and we've got the version there. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna reverse that now so that we're actually going to remove that um, from the roaming clients and we can just do this here. We can actually delete this from here and we can also remove the application or the umbrella roaming client that we installed on that machine. So we'll do that now because what we're going to do is use that same machine to enable the umbrella module on the secure client. So let's just remove this from here so that we don't get confused. And now we'll head over to our remote device to uninstall the umbrella roaming client. On our remote device, we we'll just find the umbrella roaming client and let's uninstall that there. Okay, and once that's done, we can verify that as it's removed from the tray there. So we're good to go. We're good to install the umbrella module on the secure client. And it's the same process if you're doing it for AnyConnect. However, as mentioned, AnyConnect is now end of life. So we've got our AnyConnect Secure Mobility Client installed here. We've got the VPN module. And what we're actually going to do is we're going to take the opportunity to install the new Secure Client while we're here. Now, just before we do that, let's just return back to our Umbrella dashboard because there's something we're going to need um, in here. And we're going to need basically our configuration file that associates our uh, umbrella deployment when configuring this. So to get that file, we need to go to our roaming client on the top right there. And we can see that we've got the module profile here and we need to download that because we will need that as well. So we'll download that and we'll revisit that uh, a little bit later when we do need that. Now let's head over to download our software required for the deployment of the umbrella module. So we've now got our secure client downloaded and it's worth mentioning at this point that there's actually a few ways we can deploy this umbrella module. If you have an environment where you use an ASA or Firepower or even off SecureX, you can make use of those different pieces or those different environments to actually install the umbrella module or push this out to your users. We're going to do it the manual way, however, as we've downloaded and we've got all the information that we need now. So I'm just going to copy these 
pieces of information across to our remote machine and then we can go through the installation process. All right, so that's those two files transferred across now. So we've got the org info, which we'll need to tie this uh, installation and uh, module, if you like, to our umbrella tenant. And then we've got the secure client, which is what we're going to use to uh, install the umbrella module. So we'll just extract the secure client. And then once extracted, you can see we've got the different modules in here. So the module that we need is the umbrella pre-deploy. Now this would be uh, straightforward if we already had the right version running, the secure client. However, as pointed out already, I'm already using the older version or the previous version, which is Cisco AnyConnect. So I'm going to run through the setup to actually install this. And what we want to do is we want to keep the VPN in this instance because I already have that. And um, I will uninstall or deselect the rest apart from the umbrella module that we'll need as well. I'll also leave the diagnostics and reporting tool there as well. So let's install them. And then it'll ask us to confirm. So you can see I'm installing the AnyConnect VPN. I've got the diagnostics and reporting tool and the umbrella module. So let's install that. And you can read through the end user license agreement and accept that. All right, so that's the secure client installation now complete. We'll just set, press OK on that. And we can see that the AnyConnect has been removed it's not there now if we actually want to open this now so if we go to uh, type secure client rather now uh, you can see it here so if we click on that as the uh, application there we can see now that we have the new secure client and we've got our any connect module there and we also have our umbrella module there as well so we can see right now it's telling us that the profile is missing and therefore umbrella is actually inactive at the moment so we need to add that profile and that profiles basically this file that we have here so we need to actually add this file to our program data so we'll copy this file here and we want to go to our C drive and we want to show our hidden files so you can see that's selected there if it's not already selected do select that or you won't be able to see your program data folder so we'll click on that and then we want to go to Cisco and then we want to go to our secure client and then we want to find umbrella and then we want to put that file in here as well. So now you can see that folder, uh, that file has been put into, into there as well. We'll just close that there. Let's just quit that and give it a start it again. And just for the purpose of this video, I'm just going to rename this file. There you go. Okay, so that's the installation complete and you can see another folder is being created there with data um let's just open the secure client again first and voila what we can see now is umbrella is active and it's running as it should be so that's really good and if we click onto this we can actually see we get the windows 10 um test machine as a client name we can see when we were last connected, we can see that we're protected for IPv4, IPv6 is not configured. And we have some other information here if we were using the uh, secure web gateway as well. We can also see the DNS requests. Uh, so we can see the UDP requests and responses. And if there's any TCP uh, requests and responses for uh, DNS as well.
and similar with IPv6 if you are using IPv6 as well. So that's really good. And then if we go to messaging history, we also get some information here as well, which is really cool. So now if we open our browser again and we just go to let's go to let's just refresh this page here or let's just open it in another browser just to make sure we are protected we can see here that we are protected with cisco umbrella now which is great and similarly if we just try to go to internet bad guys com we should get that block page there as well and there you go we can see that it's blocked so we know that umbrella is working now functioning correctly and we are protected using this cisco secure client with the umbrella module installed and configured so let's take a look now on our umbrella dashboard and see what we can see so if we head back over to our dashboard and on roaming computers, let's just refresh this now. And we should now see the Windows 10 machine is back now. And we can see that we are protected as expected and as seen. And this time we can see that our client is the Cisco secure client and we've got the right version there as well. And again, we get the protected status for IPv4 and the policy that's applied to us in this uh, particular instance there. So we can see it's default policy and we set up a remote policy or a policy for remote users previously. So we can go back and we can uh, just modify that policy and make sure that that uh, applies to this particular roaming device. So let's go to policies, DNS policies. And let's go to our remote workers and let's edit our identity. You can see there we've got our roaming computers in there. We've got both of them selected. So maybe it just takes a little bit to uh, update. But nevertheless, just to be sure, let's just reselect that as we deleted the device when we were using the roaming client. And let's add that back and save that. Brilliant. So now we've got that back in there. If we go to our deployment roaming computers, and we expand this again, you can still see it saying the last active policy was the default policy. We head over to our reports, and if we have a look at our activity, let's just filter on the roaming computers here there we go so we can see there that we've got the dns request coming in so similar information as you saw with the umbrella roaming client um but this time we're using the secure client the cisco secure client formerly cisco any connect so that's how we can install the umbrella roaming module for the Cisco Secure Client and ensure that it is running for our remote users. As I said, there is other ways to deploy this as well, especially in production or enterprising environments. You may choose to deploy this using the Cisco ASA or Cisco Firepower or even using the SecureX. If you have any security or Cisco security products, you do get access to SecureX for free as well. And you can actually use that to uh, deploy this umbrella roaming module as well.